Hi guys, Macintosh Guide, and today we're going to be looking at upgrading our ROG Ally X. Now, as you can tell, I've already taken out most of the screws from here, but there's six screws in total that we need to remove, and we're going to be upgrading it with a two terabyte Arico drive. Um, so let's get straight into it. So as mentioned, the six Phillips screws that we need to remove use a Phillips screwdriver. Um, and that will allow us to kind of bolt. If we remove the bottom one, you'll see there's a bit of a bulge. And then all we need to do is get our toothpick, well, not toothpick, our guitar pick, like this, and just run it across. So let me do that now. Now, just bear in mind, this machine will turn on if you accidentally press this button here. So just be careful as much as you can. As you can tell, there's some screws that just stay inside. As you take the case out, they will pop out as well. So just be careful. But the bottom screw will stay intact. So just a heads up on that. Once you've unclicked the device out, one of the most important things is there's a ribbon cable right about here. As you can tell, so be very gentle when you move when you're moving this out though. You do not want to stretch the cable, you do not want to damage the cable, you don't want to do anything of any sort. So I'm just going to put it on the side here. We're not going to to try and affect or damage damage it as much as we can. You can disconnect the ribbon cable if you would like to. In my instance, I'm going to just try and be careful that I don't damage it in any way. So we've laid it down flat right next to it. And you can now see we're in our ROG Ally. So you can tell that there's a battery connection right here. For our instance, we we should be able to remove this drive without having to tingle around with the battery. All you have to do is unscrew the SSD screw and then gently pull it from the side and just wiggle it out as we have done here. And then all we need to do is get our, S our SSD and jiggle it back in. So as you can see here, I've now got my two terabyte drive. And then as I mentioned, we just need to wiggle it in to position like we have here. And just gently position it in. And then insert the drive in. It might be a little fig a little bit fig fiddly, but once you're in, you should just be able to push it in as we've done right here. And put the cable, put the battery cable down as much, as much as we can quite quickly, and then we just need to screw, put the screw back in to position like we have here, and then all we need to do is just screw it back down. That's done, and that's it. SSD is in place. And then all we need to do is just be very careful, put everything back into position. Just be careful of the cable, as we mentioned. And everything should hopefully just click back into place. I'm just trying to be extra careful, not breaking anything along the way. And that's it, we're all clicked in, and then we'll move on to the next step. So what we now need to do is we now need to get a USB-C dongle and a Windows 11 bootable drive, plug it into our dongle. And what I also recommend is plugging in your Ally to a power source, stick it into the second USB. This is what I love about the ROG Ally X, they've made two USB-C ports. And then we just hold the power down and we should hopefully get live if we've done everything successfully. And it should hopefully pick up a Windows 11 bootable. 
Now let's just double check. And you can obviously see me. And let's just give it a bit of time before it can... There you go, it's the ally. Now does it recognize Windows? Bootable, should I say. I'm going to just keep this on fast forwarding. And there we go. I didn't even have to fast forward anything. It just automatically recognized Windows. And let me get a keyboard and mouse. Now, as you can tell, we see a Windows 11 bootable. So let's just check if the touchscreen works. And it does. We'll click next. And then we want to click on previous version of setup. And then that should hopefully take us back to this old Windows setup phase. Click next, click install, and then it should hopefully take us through the setup. And bear in mind, none of these sticks will work at the beginning. We have to wait until the software for that. We also need to download the ROG software for that separately. I've plugged in a, a mouse adapter so I should have mouse there you go just to make my life easier you click next and I'm just going to enlarge in this and then all we need to do is we need to do custom we can see our two terabyte drive right there click next and Windows should start installing on our two terabyte drive and I'm just waiting for it to confirm and there you go and then all we have to do is just wait until it goes past this stage. So I'll be back when it brings us to Windows Setup. And we've made it. The Ally is now to Windows 11 Setup. So I will set this up. And that's pretty much it, guys. We're pretty much good to go. Windows 11 updates will help us get through everything. Um, and we will, all you'll need to do is just install the drivers from Asus's website for the ROG Ally X and that's it. You're pretty much good to go. And what I strongly suggest you use is G Helper with your Ally. But guys, this is the Ally and it's upgraded to two terabytes. Now, before we go, I disappear. One of the things you might realize is when you're trying to go through setup, you will not have any ethernet or internet access at all. What you'll need to do is you'll need to do a bypass NRO via command line and that's something you can find easily on the internet and I will do a video some point in the future as a short as a YouTube short so you'll find it on my channel as well um, and what you'll need to do you'll, do you'll need to do that to be able to bypass the, the internet requirement create a local account as I've done here now one of the things you'll realize is none of these joy cons nothing works it, it doesn't want to do anything nothing nothing comes up and that's because the drivers are not there. And there's two ways to do it. You can either plug an Ethernet cable into your dongle and then go through the Asus website, or you could download it via your laptop. And I'll show you via my MacBook all the downloads that you're going to be needing. All you're going to do is you're going to just have to type in ROG Ally X drivers on Google, and it'll be the first link. And as you can tell, you just need to go down to drivers and download each and every one. So one from networking, chipset, audio, graphics, card reader, pointing device, Bluetooth, hotfix. You do not need to worry about the MyAsus software tool and the biometric authentication. These are the ones that you're gonna to need to download uh, for your machine to start working as it should be. So once they're downloaded, copy it onto a USB stick and then we'll switch back over to the Ally. So we now have everything in our USB stick. And all we'll need to do is we'll need to go to this PC and you can already see the one, the two terabytes is being registered. We'll need to go to our USB drive and let me just make this slightly larger so you guys can see. And you'll see I've created an ROG drivers folder and we're going to have to individually install each of these things. So one by one, just start installing each of the items. And you'll realize that the functionality for, for your joysticks, everything will start 
working as expected. So I'm gonna end I'm gonna install them off camera and then I'll be back. And as you guys can see, everything is working as it should be. The mouse is working, we've got Wi-Fi down here. Everything is working as it should be, and that's a successful installation. And as you can see, I've got G Helper installed here as well, which works fantastically. You just click on the button, it works naturally, and it's I think it's the best thing to have on any Asus machine. But guys, that's how you upgrade the SSD, and that's how you get a functioning uh, ally. Now, you can clone your device if you want to, but I wanted to just do a brand new experience so i can then install bazite which is what we're going to be doing in our future video so stay tuned for that